Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to My Deep Guide. And in today's video, there's two important parts to this video. First one is a very, very important correction to my last video, well, not the last video, but the video where I was comparing 300 to 227 PPI. Um, I discovered that I made a big, big mistake, like a fundamental mistake. And I do apologize for that. So that's why I'm issuing this correction. And also I realized that only when I started making this video where I am going to compare the 300 PPI screens. So that's the second part of this video. So the main focus of the video is going to be focusing on comparing the 300 PPI. Um, are they all the same? Where are the differences and how they stack against each other? And the three contenders are again Kindle Scribe, and then we have a Note Air 3C, and then we have also Tab Ultra C Pro. All three have 300 ppi in monochromatic content. We're going to be reviewing monochromatic content here, but obviously these two, the Note Air 3C and the Tab Ultra C Pro, they have a Kaleido 3 screen, which is a different type of technology because it does have that passive color matrix on the top. And also I wanted to pick these two specifically because books um, Note Air 3C has a paper-like film like the Kindle Scribe does, but the Tab Ultra C Pro does not have it. So it's going to be interesting to see how all of these kind of compare to each other and where the strengths, where the weaknesses and what are the preferences that you might actually, yep, what's, what's best for your taste and what's best for my taste and that kind of stuff. So that's going to be the second part of the video, but now the first one, the correction regarding the 227 PPI. And what was the catastrophic mistake that I made? Uh, yes, embarrassing one really, but I was uh, also tired. No excuses, I mucked up. So the mistake was accidentally, I left the Neo Reader in speed refresh mode, not in regal refresh mode. And speed refresh mode lowers the resolution, the rendering, rendering resolution quality of rendering characters at the expense of, uh, or you, it gains speed at the expense of quality. And that's the jagginess that we actually saw when I was comparing 227 versus 300. Now, in all honesty, I was actually, that's, that's how bias works. And it's in, in a way wonderful to see that because I was expecting, fully expecting to see pixelization of fonts on 227 versus 300 PPI when I put it under the microscope. And lo and behold, when I put the microscope there, I saw pixelization on this one, didn't see pixelization, Kindle Scribe, and hey presto, I went to the wrong conclusion that everything's fine. However, when I did the same thing with the 300 PPI, and it's like, hey, wait, wait a minute, that, that doesn't track, that's just wrong. And then it was like, oh, okay, I, I made a poo poo. So yeah, that was the error. And now let's correct it and see actually how does it really look like and how do they really compare 300 versus 227 ppi and after that we check out the 300 ppi comparisons okay so let's start this video with a correction comparison between the uh, kindle scribe and the note air 3 after i've noticed my horrendous horrendous mistake that i yet yeah, once again apologize for so like before this is the kindle scribe this is the note air 3 except that this time it's in proper quality slash speed mode and what's truly impressive is that the differences are far far less now so basically yeah when we start zooming in it's even less of a difference that you can notice between the two and this time there's no tweening because i adjusted the contrast and things like that and of course the contrast doesn't match too well now it's better than it was but it's still not ideal now now the books is a little bit more pale so i still have to figure out where is the right settings to actually match the the um, yeah, these two platforms as close as possible, but it's much closer than what we had before. And even now, when you actually zoom in, you you get to see that the difference between 227 and 300 PPI is 
basically negligible because especially if the device has that uh, film on top of it, the paper-like film, because that in itself will cause the distortion that is of a larger quote-unquote resolution than the screens are. And you can actually see that around here. Maybe, maybe you get to see a little bit of a difference here on the curves themselves, but in general, yeah, and here when they're super thin, this is where you start to see a little bit of a resolution uh, change. And there we go on the G, for example. Yeah, this is where you start seeing that difference. But you got to get to this super close level. Um, yeah, in order to get it to be different. And it's really, really important to see now the scope of my error. <laughs> um, and when it is in the correct uh, uh, refresh mode, you get to see the full resolution and we do not see those jagged edges anymore. And it's just simply as smooth as it is here. And basically all of the imperfections that you see are imposed by that uh, paper-like film surface that's on top of both of these devices, both of the Kindle Scribe and the Note Air 3. And just remember, Note Air 3 is 227 PPI. This is 300 PPI here and yeah, that's it's uh, very, very, very difficult to see any meaningful difference here in resolution itself. Okay, so let's get on to the 300 PPI comparison now. All right, and here we are with uh, these three devices. I can reveal which one is which. So obviously the one on the far left is the uh, Kindle Scribe. The middle is Note Air 3C and the right hand side is the Tab Ultra C. And right out the gate, I mean, other than having a inherent darkness of the Kaleido screens that the uh, two books devices have, as far as the resolution uh, and the quality of the image, there really is not much to be seen between the two. We get to see a little bit more, you know, kind of punchy contrast here in the, uh, um, yeah, like, I don't know, for me, it stands out a bit more on the books uh, devices, even though the background is darker and in theory, it should provide for less of a contrast. Um, yeah, the, the, the fonts are a bit punchier and a bit more meatier and they kind of seem, uh, I don't know, like a thicker or kind of fuller type of print than what you have on the Kindle Scribe. Then we get to the zoom level two, uh, same as before. So the previous one is basically the document is fitted onto the screen. It's like just the natural size of the document and the, the device is actually fitted to frame of the camera and it's at around 70 to 80 centimeters distance from the camera. And then the view is just cropped to fit these images so that they can be compared. Uh, we have the same setting here. So same distance, everything the same. The only difference is that now the documents have been fit to width on all of these uh, devices so that we can compare them. And here again, I think it's exactly the same here. So uh, very little differences here. What I can notice, especially between these two, the, between the Note Air 3 uh, C and the Tab, uh, yeah, Tab Ultra C Pro, is that there's ever so slightly a little bit less sharpness between these two. So Tab Ultra C Pro, because it doesn't have that uh, paper-like film uh, on top, it does have a little bit of a sharper type of an image quality than the Note Air 3C. And possibly, yeah, it's a little bit sharper and a little bit crisper than the, than the Kindle Scribe as well. But as far as readability and quality goes, I mean, they're both equal. They're um, the only difference, of course, is again that inherent darkness of the Kaleido 3 screen. It's only when we get to this level that we actually see yeah, uh, what, what the uh, Kaleido 3 screen is and where that darkness is. And that's that passive color filter that's on top of yeah, all of the content that you have. Um, but even here, the contents are uh, 
actually it seems like the Tab Ultra C Pro is a little bit sharper than the Kindle Scribe and the uh, Tab Ultra, uh, Note Air 3C. But interestingly, Note Air 3C seems, because of this matrix, because it, you know, kind of uh, doesn't all, the, the, this is an optical illusion because the uh, matrix doesn't really allow you to see a clear background. So we're inclined to forgive some jaggies while if we do see these kind of jaggies around here, especially around the R here against the pure uh, monochrome background, then it's much more prone to see. I, so I believe that they are of the same type of sharpness, uh, but objectively, uh, Tab Ultra C is sharper, Tab Ultra C Pro, simply because it's the only one out of these three that does not have that paper-like film uh, screen protector or uh, uh, layer on top of the screen. And then you can actually see that it does have an effect on the clarity and the sharpness of the image itself. And then we get to the microscopic image and then we see that difference uh, very, very clearly. We can see that 300 ppi pretty much equal across the board. They're all rendering it out very, very nicely, but we do have a very, very clear difference uh, what that paper-like film protector on top of the content means actually when you look at a single character. And yeah, on Tab Ultra C Pro, you get to see this kind of uh, yeah, super, super clean and clear type of an image. Whereas on the other two, well, you have a little bit of fuzziness added on top because of that, um, yeah, uh, uh, foil layer on top. As far as my opinion goes and my personal taste, um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of between these two. I think that if I would increase the contrast setting on the Kindle Scribe, I think Kindle Scribe with a slightly higher contrast setting would be my uh, most favorite setting. Or if <laughs> Note Air 3C uh, was, yeah, um, yeah, a little bit brighter. But basically, yeah, Kindle Scribe uh, for me is the nicest print-like quality uh, with maybe a little bit increased contrast, which is, of course, a control that you do have um, on, on Kindle Scribe. So that for sure. Um, Tab Ultra C Pro, well, yes, undeniably it has the crisp, and yeah, more sharpest image there. But that for me is the problem because of that matrix. And that matrix, even though this is like zoomed in and if you zoom out, it appears as if you don't see it. In, in well-lit conditions, in a sunny day inside, you can actually see the matrix with your naked eye. And for me, that's a distraction. That's something that I found to be like very, very kind of buzzy and distracting. And uh, I react to it. Um, maybe you won't, but it's something that I definitely reacted to. Whereas in on the Note Air 3C, I did not have that type of reaction simply because it has that fuzziness. And as you can see in this one, it blurs them out and kind of unifies them a little bit more. Whereas in here, they're super, super defined. And you can see that in the microscopic image as well, that you there, there's a little bit of kind of blurriness of this all where they are here all well defined. So for me, uh, that's, that's my impression of these three, but I am uh, most surprised about the corrected, yeah, uh, comparison of the 227 versus 300. I expected there to be a much bigger difference when zooming in. Um, so yeah, that, that was a, a big shock, but honestly, yeah, 300 PPI, definitely the same, uh, across the board on all of these, they render the characters in the same uh, type of quality, which is excellent to see. The only thing that you, uh, have is like, hmm, do you want that paper like film, uh, feel? at the cost of sharpness and do you prefer, do you want to see all of the details that you get to see on the Tab Ultra C Pro? I mean, to get it so sharp, I know I don't. So that's why I prefer out of these two, I prefer this one. Out of these three, I prefer the Kindle Scribe.
Okay, so that is, yeah, my impression about all of this. Again, my sincere apologies about the, the mistake that I made regarding the original comparison, 300 versus 227. Um, but it's interesting to see actually that nobody noticed that. I didn't notice it, you guys didn't notice it, nobody reacted to it. We all fully expected that 227 is going to be jagged and we were all wrong. And that's kind of nice to see that that stuff can happen. So yeah, learn from mistakes, definitely learn from these mistakes. You make mistake and then you check it out and it's like even more interesting types of result. So for me, the next one is going to be like to try and fine tune and find which settings, contrast settings and image settings in NeoReader can match Kindle Scribe as, as much as possible, but it's still not one-to-one. -one. It's far closer and far more accurate than what we had uh, in the initial comparison. But still, there's a little bit more tweaky, tweakiness to, to, to get there, to get to the uh, uh, perfect results or as close to perfect results as possible. As far as 300 PPI goes, yep, I think I've said everything there. I'm just interested to hear your comments and your impressions between all of these three devices. And um, yeah, basically your comments about this whole thing, especially the, the differences in resolutions and now with the correct results like does it really matter 227 versus 300 ppi because we all jumped on the neck of the note air tree or oh, it doesn't have 300 ppi does it really matter I don't know. In my book, especially after seeing this, I can trust my eyes which was when I compared these two you see a tiny little bit of a difference if you're really looking for it. But in normal use, as far as my impression is, you don't really get to see that big of a difference. Much, much bigger difference are other, other factors and other types of settings. And that's, that's the thing, that's the lesson that I've learned from this experiment, at least as far as I'm concerned. So I'm kind of uh, hoping to hear from you guys as well in comments to engage in this discussion because it's interesting to kind of hear that and also to see what type of future tests uh, might be interesting to perform and test because yeah it's good to learn about this stuff and to see see what's what i hope that you liked the video if you did please like and subscribe ending the notification bell in the description down below and also visit mydeepguide.com shop to check out mdo which is your yearly organizer for all of your personal or professional organizing uh, annual needs and also you have MMP, which is My Deep Guide Meeting Planner, which is also a hyperlinked PDF file that helps you uh, organize and satisfy all of your organizing planning needs for meetings. Uh, more information about both of these products you can find in the description of this video and links to dedicated playlists that describe pretty much everything what the products are but the important part here is that purchasing of these products directly supports the independence of my deep guide so i thank you very very much for that stay safe stay healthy and see you in the next video bye